So what is it like to buy a house and sell it for a profit? This video is just going to be a raw video where I'm going to talk about how we found the deal, uh, all the numbers and everything. I'm going to show you absolutely everything. I don't know if people do this on YouTube. Uh, I'm not here to say that I'm the best, right? And or if my team's the best, uh, I'm just going to show you how we uh, took an opportunity where we were presented an off market deal. We bought it we put money into it and we flipped it for profit. So this is for anyone that has ever wanted to get started. I hope that you learned something new. And if you do, please consider dropping a thumbs up and or subscribing to the channel. So let's go ahead and jump right to it. So I wanna show you the house very quickly. Um, this is a house that we picked up. Um, I wanna say, I think it was 56 days ago. I think the total uh, time of this overall flip uh, came down to be anywhere from 58 days, yeah, 58 days. So uh, the really great thing about this is that asking that first question, how is it that we came across this off-market deal? How do people buy deals off-market? Well, you can do it either through friends or family, word of mouth, and or you can work with wholesalers. What is a wholesaler? Feel free to Google it to get the exact definition, but pretty much what a wholesaler does is they find deals. So they source deals, it's this entire team. Uh, there's wholesalers everywhere in every state, and all they do is they're not actually putting up any money, but they find the contract to sell, and all they do is they reassign it um, to another buyer, right? So there's people like myself and there's people like you that are looking for deals, but maybe we're not the best at sourcing deals. So there's wholesalers that their entire business model is sourcing deals. So as they find these deals, they have a list of investors and or buyers that will buy the deal for a little bit more than what they paid for. I wanna show you an example of this. Um, again, they're of value to us and we're of value to them. So just like you guys, right? If you guys find any deals off market in Arizona, and you're like, well, I don't have the money for it, all that stuff. The money is the least important part. The hardest part right now is sourcing the deals. And I'm just being completely just open with you guys. If you ever find deals, don't worry about the money. My link is in the description. Send me a message on Instagram and I will pay for the house cash if it's a deal. That's the biggest difference. So we bought this house off market for four hundred thousand dollars, so four hundred nine nine zero, and you guys can look into this. So, uh, asking the question, well, how much did this wholesaler get it for? If you look at Zillow and you see what they actually sourced it for, when we buy the property and we're, you know, um, actually closing on the property, we can then see what they actually bought it for. Up until that point, we have no idea what they bought it for. We just know that it's probably less than what we paid. So, very quickly on August thirty first, twenty twenty one, we can see that it supposedly sold for three hundred. 80,000. This is what is reflected on Zillow, but what is at what actually happened is if they got it for 380,000, then we paid $400,000 for it, right? So it's a difference of $20,000. That's in a sense what these wholesalers made. And I think it was wholesale twice. So someone made 16, someone made 4. It was a very simple process and Again, that's the beauty behind wholesaling. If you're looking for an avenue in real estate where you don't wanna have or need any capital and you're just really good with sourcing deals, look into wholesaling and make sure you reach out to us and send us all your deals because I would like love to buy them from you. So we had a realistic ARV, which is after repaired value of this house based off of the past three months. So they're, they're called comps. They're just comparable houses based off of area, square footage, and of course, location, right? So it was about half a million dollars. I want to break down everything. So I just showed you, right, and explained to you the, you know, how it is that we sourced it. What I want you to see is what we bought for $400,000. I want you to see the before and after and everything that went into it. I want you to understand absolutely everything. So we knew that this house was worth about half a million dollars. We got the deal for 400,000, right? The wholesalers made their money, now it's ours. I pay for these properties cash, right? So my business partner is Nick Palladino. I'm gonna put his Instagram uh, down below. My part in this partnership is I pay for everything cash. I do not work with hard money lenders. I do not work with banks. I pay for everything out of pocket cash. This is easier for us as we can leverage our cash in hand and not have to worry about anyone else. So this is why I'm saying, if you find deals in Arizona and you're worried about not having the money and or you know friends or family that want to sell their house and you wanna make some money off of it, right? Reach out to us, tell me what it is that they want 
and then we can negotiate from there. It's as simple as that. If you know people, if you're good at sourcing deals, don't worry about the money. That's where I can come in. And we're, we're super open to, we've partnered up with people that have followed me on Instagram, that have followed me on YouTube, where not only can we, we can pay you a flat rate. If you don't wanna have any part of it, you're just like, I just wanna make a couple thousand dollars, uh, we can just pay you a finder's fee. And or, if you wanna learn the process, if you're in Arizona, right? And you wanna learn the process, the ins and the outs, the, the project management, then we can also put you in for a percentage. I am so open to anything. It's just the biggest thing is sourcing deals. So I need you to know that. So if you know any deals, I hope you message me on Instagram. So this is, um, I'm going to show you a couple pictures of what we purchased for $400,000. So that's the kitchen. Uh, that's kind of like the living room space, a little, a little bit more details, obviously very outdated. Uh, and then this is the backyard, right? I want to show you before I show you the before and after, I want to show you what went into it, the renovations. Again, I don't know if people on YouTube or people online uh, share all the numbers broken down. Um, I think that this could be useful for you to get a realistic understanding of what goes into a flip. Uh, and please comment down below your thoughts. If you guys like these, I'd love to make more. We flip about two to three properties a month. Uh, so the demolition, so demo, meaning that, uh, again, just ripping up um, either uh, parts of the uh, kitchen, ripping up the carpet, stuff like that. So overall demo work, $2,000. Flooring material, 2100 right? Flooring labor, actual installation, that. So Amazon would buy a bunch of, uh, you know, the different appliances and or uh, the little knickknacks and, you know, the accents and stuff like that on Amazon. Uh, handyman, total of 5600 Electrician, 1200 uh, Granite slabs, 1500 Actually pretty cheap. Appliances, 1500 So we got all new appliances. Paint and exterior, uh, 3200 Staging, for those that don't understand, staging is when you pay a company to um, furnish your property for it to look more homey for people to be able to see themselves and I'll explain to you uh, it's either walking into an empty house that's remodeled where there's you know you're just trying to picture yourself in there and or you can furnish the house so it looks more homey so they can actually see themselves living there it's an approach and normally when a house is anywhere over four to uh, five hundred thousand dollars we like to stage a house. It makes more sense. The cheaper houses, maybe not, right? Uh, so then going all the way into Home Depot and Lowe's, again, the different parts that we bought there, backsplash, uh, bathroom, granite countertops, uh, baseboards, bathrooms, once again, 4,800. Uh, paint on the cabinets. So again, just keeping the same cab cabinets, but just repainting them. Uh, garbage paint, backsplash, labor, uh, landscaping, paint, uh, shower glass, and you'll see this, we actually put a lot of money into one of the master bathrooms, uh, uh, carpet, cleaners, AC repairs, and trash. Total renovations, right? We bought this house for 400,000. Uh, when it comes down to our purchase price and then the, uh, the overall uh, total to close. Uh, there's like title fees and stuff like that. It came out to be 40, uh, 406,000. So just be aware of that. And then we put in uh, $49,000 into renovations. Pretty much $50,000 is went into it. Now this comes down to holding costs. You need to understand this. So even if you're not actually uh, flipping houses with us, right? Your holding costs might be a little bit different and it's all based off of are you paying for the house cash or do you have a hard money lender? The reason I'm sharing this with you is I want this to be useful even if you don't partner up with us. Holding costs, you could flip houses by having someone that lends you money, but normally there's gonna be a holding cost for, it's, it's kind of just like the interest that you're paying to have this money. Obviously, we don't have any holding costs for hard money fees or for you know loan fees because we're paying for it cash and out of pocket. I need you to know that if you don't have that option, if you are paying for this through a hard money lender and or another lender, then you're gonna have normally on average, it's anywhere from 10 to 15% is what you are going to pay annualized. So if you borrowed half a million dollars within a year, if you're at 10%, then you're gonna pay about $50,000 overall in holding costs uh, and or whatever it breaks down to per month, right? So you need to take that into consideration as that eats up into your margins of net profits at the very end. So again, our holding cost was very simple. It was insurance as in you know, property insurance, water and trash, electric and gas. Altogether, very cheap, $700,000. This for the period that we had it, because I think we held the property for a little bit under 60 days. Uh, this would have been for a total of two months. And on average, uh, let me do actually very quick, quick math. Uh, so at half a million, 
Let's say that you're a hard money lender. I want to be as realistic as possible. Is at 12%. So at 12%, you're paying $60,000 a year. So divided by 365, you're paying 164 a day. So now we're going to do that times 30 on average. Uh, that's about nearly, oh, I'll tell you exactly, $4,931 a month. And then if we do that times two, obviously, because it's a total of 60 days, uh, it's $9,863.01. So you would have added that to your holding costs. So if you had a hard money lender at 12% for the, let's say half a million, right? Because you bought the property for 400,000. Let's say you borrowed a little bit more money for you know renovations if you didn't have any. Again, I don't know, I don't know what the interest rate is. It's just I want you to understand that this doesn't always look so small as in the $700, uh, $700 uh, dollars, uh, in holding costs, because sometimes, again, realistically, other people have hard money lenders and or they're not paying out of pocket, right? <laughs> so total expenses, 400 uh, or $49,713, holding costs, 699, purchase price, 406, total expenses uh, collectively, right? So including all of this, uh, $456,000. So what I want you to understand is we took this property that we bought for 400,000, we put $49,000 into it and with holding costs and we're in it now for $456,000. We turned this property into this. You guys ready? All right, the before and the after. So this is a property that has been remodeled. So you guys can see that we did the paint, uh, we did uh, the accent things as in like, you know, the fan, we staged it, carpet, uh, what is it, the baseboards. Let's move on over to the next one. This is the exterior. So this is exterior landscaping, exterior paint. Obviously we had to abide by the HOA. So make sure that you're aware of that. Uh, this is the before and after of the, the landscaping in the back, right? It went from something like this to something like this, right? Moving on forward, uh, this is now the living room. Obviously, just imagine walking into an empty house and or walking into a house that is staged, right? You can at least see yourself living there, right? So it, it at least appeals to people. Uh, and again, when someone is trying to purchase a property, especially first time home buyers, uh, you wanna make sure that you present your you know, property uh, at the best, possible way uh, for you to try to get you know the top dollar uh, so this is now the kitchen so you get to the catch kitchen with the new granite top um, all the new appliances all that stuff so you guys can let me know in the comment section what you guys or how it is that you guys think that we did um, oh let me go ahead and go on back but you can see uh, the sink uh, the backsplash the cabinets the accents when it comes down to the um, hit, uh, what is it called? The, the handles, uh, appliances, all of that, right? And then the staging, right? The stools, all of this, right? For people to, to be able to see themselves. We did not include a refrigerator, right? That's not something that we needed to include. Uh, again, the living room, this is um, as you walk into the property. So we have the kind of formal dining room, uh, overall entrance. Uh, and then this is the master bathroom. So um, this is where I feel like we really spent the majority of the money and it made a lot of sense. We just went all out and we just wanted someone to absolutely fall in love with this house, right? Um, and yeah, I mean, this is uh, where we've invested $49,000 into that property. So uh, again, we're in it for 456, we have a fully remodeled house. And by that time, right, um, we're, we're ready to list the property, the property is staged. And then this is where Nick and I had a quick little conversation and Nick had an amazing idea of like, again, we expect to sell, we expect it to realistically, very conservatively sell the house for half a million dollars. We're in it for 456,000. If we sell it for half a million, uh, realistically, you know, there's a 3% or two and a half percent seller's commission, right? Uh, or buyer's commission. And then for us, uh, Nick's agreement to me is that he will list the property for 1%. So that's part of our partnership. So in total for about three and a half percent plus title fees is about four to four and a half percent. And taking that into consideration, selling it for half a million, that's about $20,000 in just commission and closing costs. So we're in it for 456. We sell it for a million. Now we're net 480, right? So there's really only a difference of, what is that? A little bit under $30,000. So Nick came up with the idea of 
we want to see if we can get a bidding war. Obviously, a lot of properties, especially in Gilbert, Arizona, uh, just like many different popular parts of the United States are selling for above asking price. We wanted someone to fall in love with this property and make us their top offer to compete with other people and be able to leverage that against one another, right? It's just, we, again, we're not here to say that we're the best, we're just getting started. We've been doing this for about two years. We wanted to explore a different avenue. That's what I want you to understand out of that specific approach. We're not afraid to make mistakes, but we're also not afraid to try new things. So going into that, um, I want you to understand that we posted it, uh, just so you guys can see this very quickly. We posted it for 499,500. We accepted an above asking price offer for $525,000. $25,000 above asking price. Boom. And this was about 48 hours after posting the property for sale, right? Uh, when it came down to actually closing on the property, we have to, we had to, uh, I think, give a total of $5,000 in credit uh, when it comes down to different things that they pointed out at the house. This happens from time to time. Uh, and then with closing fees and everything, right, our net take home from the 525 was 498151, right? So a expense and total expense. So after commission and close, right, from 525, we went down to 498151, right? So now that's net, and we uh, uh, our expenses were 456. So our net profits are $41,738, and our timeline was from start to finish, right? I think it was August 31st to when we officially sold it, so you guys can see the date. From the remodel, from the purchase to the you know remodel to the staging to the selling it to the close, um, you guys can see that it's from August thirty first to our sell date of um, I think we have, yeah we officially closed on October twenty eighth. So a total of fifty eight days, seven hundred and twenty dollars a day. That is everything that led to our success on this house flip. That's it. I wanted to show you guys how we found the deal. I wanted to show you when it came down to the renovations, what went into it, what it cost, so you can realistically understand that. And of course, I wanted to be realistic. We pay for our properties cash, so we don't have any hard money fees, any lending fees, right? So, but if you take a different approach, I just want you to understand that if I would have had a hard money lender uh, in even just 60 days, which was a very quick flip, right, from start to finish, uh, that alone would have been nearly $10,000. So my net profit would have been, you know, from 40, uh, what's it called? From $41,000, where is it at? $41,000, it would have turned into you know $31,000. And that's quite a bit, right? So this is why I think it's super important for me to have shared everything, our approach, our intention, how it is that we do this, and why it is that we do a certain, you know, this certain, um, th the way that we do what, what it is that we do. Um, I just completely chopped that up. But yeah, I just wanted to show you guys a, a raw breakdown of what it's like to flip a house. Um, and again, not saying here that we're the best or anything like that. We have so much to learn, uh, but we're just so fortunate to be in the position that we are. Uh, we're just to think two years ago, we started from flipping our first house in Peoria, Arizona, uh, Nick and I, right, just for fun, just because the, it was during the midst of the pandemic. Um, and, you know, fast forward a couple of months and or, you know, a year and a half, uh, we're now flipping about two to three properties every month. We'd love to flip more, right? We'd love to take on more, uh, but the biggest part is sourcing deals, which is why I'm also making this video, and I don't wanna sugarcoat it, is I want to empower you and remind you that I don't want you to worry about the money. If you're in Arizona and you're sourcing deals, if you're good at finding off-market deals and or market deals that are below asking price or below market value, message me or message Nick. All of our informations are gonna be in the description. Send us the deal. We'll, we'll, we'll pay you a finder's fee and or we'll flip the property with you. I don't want you to worry about the money. I don't need you to worry about the money. I need you to know how valuable you are. And people don't like to say this because it gives too much power to the wholesalers or the people that find the deals. I don't care about that. My focus right now is finding more deals. I need you to know that if you find deals, you are of value to me and I can be of value to you if you present them to me and I can pay you for them. I can pay you above of what it is that you got it under contract for and or we can flip the property together. I am open to so many different things. You just need to. 
find me deals. So again, all my information is down in the description. Uh, we flipped properties before with people that have followed me on Instagram, uh, with an 18 year old you know, student at ASU that uh, followed me on YouTube. Uh, the, the thing that we like to do is we like to be open to any opportunity. And I hope that that can be something that's mutually respected on both sides, right? So again, I hope that we earned your thumbs up. I hope that you learned something new. Please consider subscribing. Thank you again for 1 million subscribers. Um, and like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a green note. Take it easy, team.